Welcome back guys. It's been a long time since I've put out a video and uh, part of the reason for that is that we're in the middle of winter and it's been 18 degrees out and covered in snow and there's just not a whole lot going on out in the garden. But, um, but before the ground froze and before the snow started to fall, I did manage to take some soil tests out of my garden and I also took some out of my lawn. Um, and this is just a quick little backstory to that. We've been here for like five years now. We bought this house five years ago and as soon as we moved in, we started utilizing the Back to Eden method with the wood chips and the manure and grass clippings and all that kind of stuff. And you know, the soil looks great and it, and it works good. Um, but I finally took some soil tests. I've never tested my soil here. And when we started our Back to Eden garden, we started with just lawn. There was no garden here. So it was just a chunk of lawn and we turned it into the Back to Eden style of gardening and kind of moved on from there. Well, it's been five years now, five years we've been doing this and I thought it might be kind of neat. I, I wanted to take a soil test just to kind of get a baseline to kind of see where I'm at. And, uh, and what I did is I also took a soil test from the lawn right next to my garden. So we can kind of compare because that's what we started with five years ago, you know, it was just lawn. Uh, I don't fertilize my lawn at all. Uh, my chickens kind of do because they free range all over my lawn and so they're doing what they do and uh, so there's some of that going on. Um, I fertilize my vegetable garden very lightly. Uh, I have put some inputs into it. I have put some fish emulsion into it a couple of years back and and I do occasionally throw down a little you know organic plant tone here or there but I, I certainly don't have any real strong fertilizing regimen for my vegetable garden. It, it really is predominantly uh, fed by organic matter by wood chips and grass clippings and things like that and uh, wood ash I, I burn wood I heat my house with wood so I'll, I throw wood ash out there and and that's something we're going to talk about because there was something going on here in this test that, that caught me by surprise and uh, and I think the wood ash is is the reasoning for that so anyways I've got the soil test I just I got them back and we're going to take a minute and go over these things and kind of see where we're at all right, so here's my test results. Uh, I'm just gonna run through these quick just so you can kind of get an idea as to what we got going on here. And, and then we'll talk about some of the results that we have here and what I plan on doing uh, as far as inputs go for next season. So I've got this, this block here in green. Um, that's my grass. That was a soil test that I took for my existing lawn. And then this block over here in purple, these are the results from my Back to Eden garden. Um, so we start off with the top up here, uh, soil texture, we got this fine sandy loam, same over here, fine sandy loam. That's, that's pretty much to be expected, that's very typical of Connecticut soil, so I find that all the time in soil test results. Organic matter in my lawn is medium, and in my Back to Eden garden it's high, and that makes perfect sense. I've been adding tons of organic matter to my garden, so I would expect for my organic matter to be high, and that's always a good thing. Uh, this is the part that's surprising. My soil pH over here, 5.5. That's in my lawn. So that's my existing soil, 5.5. Now look at this, 7.3 over here in my Back to Eden garden. That's a heck of a jump in soil pH. Uh, I'm, I'm actually not happy about that. I would prefer to see my soil pH be around, you know, 6.7, 6.8. Uh, 7.3 is a little high, and, and I think I know why that is, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, nitrate nitrogen, and my lawn is high, and in my garden it's actually low. And my ammonium nitrogen is low in my lawn, but medium in my garden. Uh, so, you know, nitrogen is always something you have to think about in a garden, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit. My phosphorus levels are high and my lawn very high in my garden and that can be concerning too. Potassium is medium, medium low, that's fine, that's to be expected and then calcium and magnesium are high and very high in my garden, uh, kind of like to be expected, that doesn't surprise me. But anyways, this is exactly the results that I got and now we can just take a minute and talk about what we got going on here and some of the things that I plan on doing next spring to uh, maybe balance things out a little bit. All right, so now that we've got these results, let's talk about them a little bit and uh, figure out why they are, what they are, and 
and what we want to do in the future, you know, to get things balanced out, like I said. Um, so we'll start with the, uh, the soil pH. That was the big one. That really surprised me. 7.3. That's high. That's alkaline. Um, I really prefer to see my soils down around 6.7. Uh, at 7.3, you could actually have trouble taking up certain nutrients from your soil, and it, it's higher than I want it to be. And I think that's probably due to wood ash. Uh, I heat my house with wood, and I throw a fair amount of wood ash in my garden. I have been for five years now, and I think I may have gotten a little overzealous with that. Wood ash is very alkaline. It, it can be up around 9, 10, um, and I have a feeling that I... By putting all that wood ash out there, uh, I, I just think I overdid it, and that's why that pH is as high as it is. Uh, I think next year, to try to mediate that a little bit, I'm probably going to end up uh, throwing some peat moss out there. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of peat moss. I know that there are some issues with that as far as you know sustainable harvesting and whatnot. I haven't bought peat moss. I used to use peat moss when I was younger, years ago. We used to use it all the time. I haven't... Bought a bale of peat moss in probably 10 years. But in this situation, uh, you know, peat moss is good for your soil. And peat moss is very acidic. So hopefully, even if I just buy one bale of peat moss and throw it in my plant rows, it'll help my soil just with moisture retention and whatnot. But it's also, by being so acidic, it might um, gently bring that pH down to a level, like I said, down closer to 6.8 or 6.7, which is where I'd like to see it. So, uh... I'm probably going to do that in the springtime. We'll probably do that. The nitrogen levels, uh, they're kind of between the two tests. They bounce around a bit. You know, the ammonium is high in one and the nit nitrate nitrogen is low in the other. And uh, that doesn't surprise me. You know, nitrogen is one of those. Nitrogen moves in your soil a lot. And, and it, it can get tricky. You know, nitrogen uh, can wash out of your soil quite readily. It, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't lock itself into your soil molecules, so it can get washed out. It's also the nutrient that plants use the most of, especially a lot of your vegetables, leafy green vegetables, which I grow a lot of, like lettuce and kale and cabbage and things. They use a lot of nitrogen, so it gets taken out of your soil. And nitrogen is also volatile. It can actually um, just like evaporate into the atmosphere. It can be quite volatile. So nitrogen is, is something that I usually do... Um, a, a light input of nitrogen into my soil. Like I said, I've used fish emulsion in the past and some plant tone and things like that. Um, and I'll probably just continue with that. Just do a light application of nitrogen in the springtime. You know, feed that soil, feed the plants, get them growing good. Um, so that doesn't really surprise me so much. Phosphorus levels, they were high in my lawn and very high in my garden. Uh, a lot of folks might think, well, gee, if they're very high, that's good. You know, that's a, that's a good thing. But you have to be careful because sometimes having excessive amounts of nutrients in your soil, that can actually uh, be bad. You know, that can be detrimental. to uh, it, it can hurt things. Uh, phosphorus in particular, if you get phosphorus levels that are too high in your soil, they can actually interfere with the absorption of other nutrients, specifically iron and zinc. So if my phosphorus levels are very high right now, I definitely won't be doing any inputs that are going to add more phosphorus to my soil. I'm just going to leave it. I want my phosphorus levels to stay right where they're at and let the plants use what they need and, and hopefully they'll even come down a little bit. Um, but at very high, that's not, it's not horrible. It's not in the excessive range, but it's something I want to keep an eye on, you know. Uh, potassium levels are medium. That's fine. Potassium is up here in Connecticut with our typical soils. It's usually self-sustaining. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to really put much thought into that. And then my calcium and my magnesium levels are very high, so I certainly wouldn't be adding any lime to my garden. Uh, limestone is typically high in calcium and magnesium, and I wouldn't be doing that anyways because that would could jump my pH up even higher, and I want to do exactly the opposite of that. I want to bring those pH levels down. So, now that I've gotten this test, and like I said, I haven't tested my yard ever, um, and it's been five years, so I'm kind of glad I did this. I've got I've got a little bit of information to work with, you know. Um, I certainly plan on using a little bit of peat moss, and I'm going to add a little bit of nitrogen, and I'm going to make a point of not adding a lot of phosphorus to my soil next year, 
and hopefully that'll just kind of help balance things out a little bit and you know keep an eye on things and and keep things going good um hopefully this was helpful uh i just thought it would be fun to take a soil test after doing the back to eden thing and, and seeing where we're at and this is where we're at thanks for watching we'll see you soon